The Crimea incident at NCSA was a fairly small incident, and one where we did not get compromised at all. The reason we're looking at it is because it is another good example of being proactive, and also how not all incidents are computer related. This one was a PR related incident. If you remember, Crimea was going through upheaval, and a website came up petitioning for a referendum about whether they should separate from Ukraine. This website was attacked with a denial of service attack. The attack basically shut the site down and made it unusable. The way this attack took place was through an NTP exploit. For some reason, out of all the records the website had about sites involved in the attack, they decided to identify the University of Illinois. The administrators for the Ukrainian referendum site picked UIUC out of all the sites involved and brought that one to everyone's attention. The university's PR staff was contacted by a reporter wanting to know information about the attack. Specifically, they wanted to know about the allegations that NCSA contributed to the attack on the website. The PR person from the university contacted the response team at NCSA looking for more information about the situation. The response team began an investigation. They knew about the NTP being used in DOS attacks, but had not seen anything to imply NCSA had been involved. Their investigation was very thorough, looking through everything they got their hands on and looking for even the most remote indication. The results of the investigation showed that NCSA had no contact with that site for the time period in question. The team even looked at the day preceding and a day past the desired time frame. All of this turned up empty and showed there had been no contact. Stepping back about three weeks prior to the incident, the security team heard about the NTP vulnerability. The vulnerability arose from a service NTP provided. By sending a command to NTP, it would return a list of the last several systems that had connected to it for NTP time. The thing about this is that you send in a small request and you get a packet returned to you, and this packet could be up to 60 times as large as the original request. This was being done over UTP so you could easily spoof the return IP addresses. What you do is find as many NTP servers on the internet as you can that respond to this request. You spoof the IP address of your target and you send them all of the list requests. The result is that this little request you send is multiplied by 60 and by the number of servers across the globe and they're all sending the target the response. This is what happened to the Crimea site. However, at NCSA, we had identified this vulnerability weeks before and scanned the network for NTP servers. These were then checked for this vulnerability and then contacted the admins of those systems. The admins were informed about the vulnerability they were open to and instructed to either turn off the service or block it from external access. The team also set up a web page that gave instructions on how to deal with the vulnerability. This information was also given to the admins. By the end of the week, all the systems had resolved the issue. Therefore, when the Crimea attack came up, we knew for a fact that we had mitigated the vulnerability and that NCSA could not be involved in it. Even with that assurance, the team performed another scan looking for vulnerable systems and checked the network flow logs. Both of these showed that NCSA had not contributed to the attack. This slide shows why this became a PR-based incident for NCSA and the university. These items are taken from the news article that was the start of all of this. As you can see, the university was called out explicitly and identified as having powerful computers for carrying out this attack. They identified that there were three airports located in the little town of Champaign-Urbana for some reason, even though there's really only one airport here and that each and every resident in the area had 500 IP addresses. Probably the most interesting piece of information was that the NSA had a headquarters in the area. We assume they misread NCSA as NSA. The communications on this incident were very involved, as you can imagine. The PR person contacted the lead of the incident response team. He, in turn, contacted the director of security at NCSA. This then escalated to the director of NCSA, 
and finally made its way to the president of the university. All were informed about the incident and what steps were being taken. Then the results of the investigation were passed on to these same people. Luckily, this vulnerability had been addressed weeks before, so this became a non-incident. However, if the team had not been keeping up with the posting on security sites, this might have been a real problem. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.